my name is Angie Huang, and I want to thank you for being here today to hear a reflection of this 2019 Fellows. Mine is about connecting to my community. The majority of the American, um, Asian American community do not speak about disability, so people with disabilities are still the misunderstood minorities in our minority community. Growing up with a family, um, growing up with a family friend who is my age on the spectrum, I didn't know how to respond to his echolalia, which is a common symptom of autism, where certain words and phrases are repeated. He would constantly ask me, how are you, Angie? And the more time we spent together, I was just taught to nod at his questions. I had to grow up to realize that I had unknowingly been really disrespectful to my friends. Having conversations with him shouldn't have been something I had to learn to do. I was oblivious because my community refused to talk about disability. But learning from my childish ways, I've grown to a very different person, and I'm still learning today how to be a better advocate for individuals with Originally from La Habra in Southern California, the best way to describe home is that we are 15 minutes from Disneyland. The worst, way, the worst way to describe it is that for a really long time, I struggled to feel like I belonged in my own hometown. With a population that is 98% Hispanic, I was a minority in a minority community. So when I entered high school, I didn't know anybody. So I spent all my time in extracurricular clubs and working with students with disabilities. And being in these activities connected me to like-minded individuals. So I graduated with a community of friends and supporters that ended up feeling like a family to me. Well, let's fast forward to Brandon's. I have the opportunity to continue my education, and here I am, finishing up my last semester. To me, education is empowerment, so I jumped at the opportunity to be here. But that feeling of not belonging returned once again. At a small liberal arts college that prides itself on inclusion and belongingness, why did I feel like I was in the wrong place? I'm interested in bridging the education gap for students with disabilities, yet the courses at Brandeis that tackled this issue were inaccessible to me as an undergraduate. I lived to discuss TED Talks and leadership lessons, yet there was nowhere for me to engage in these conversations. Um, until I found Seagull Fellowship by Faith. Last fall, in the midst of interns, I received a random email from the Brandeis Latches Students Organization, specifically from Edith, who is a 2018 Seagull Fellow, about a life-changing opportunity to explore citizen leadership and strengthen my social capital. I had a lot of questions. What was a citizen leader? What was social capital? When and how did I sign up for the Brand New Latin Students Club? <laughs> I didn't know the answers to these, but I did want to learn more about it. I had a gut feeling that this might be the community I'd served for so long at Brand Eyes, but hey, no pressure. <laughs> so summer 2019, after many, many hours of consulting with Susie and Kyle, I made an executive decision to return home because I wanted to apply what I learned in Massachusetts, the gold standard for education and disability services, to support providers in my community back home. I landed my dream internship at the Center for Autism and Neurodevelopmental Disorders, aka the Center. As the only pediatric clinical diagnostic and treatment center in Southern California, that accepts Medi-Cal and Medicaid. The center serves the full range of socioeconomic, ethnic, and cultural diversity that you find in California. Over 3,000 families receive services and support from the center. And as a teaching facility with the University of California, Irvine, Chapman University, and the Children's Hospital of Orange County, the center enabled me to work with a diverse team on many different projects. And to name a few, I helped the educational psychology team revamp their families and schools together program, I consulted with medical providers like developmental behavioral pediatricians on patient behaviors during appointments. I consulted with the behavior intervention team to provide social skills therapy for boys with autism and anxiety. I collaborated with the clinical research team on studies like the physical exercise to reduce anxiety study. And I triaged patient needs with the intake team. Even though I am proud of all the projects I went to work on, one of my greatest accomplishments is that in one week, I expedited a new patient process that was overdue by six months because of the overwhelming number of phone calls the center receives in a day. So earlier this year, I worked on a Massachusetts bill advocating for students with disabilities. I started losing faith that I belonged in this field. I questioned whether I was articulate enough, good enough, or educated enough to call myself an ally. All the work that I had previously done has been hands-on, as I'm usually the one on the ground sitting with the kids. So I was reluctant about interning in an office setting where I would have to wear business casual rather than my usual jeans and dinosaur t-shirt. <laughs> so even with my prior experiences and intentionally being placed at the center, I still questioned whether I belong there. But every time that I doubted my place, I thought back to our first goal for reading where we talked about outsiders versus insiders of the community. And remembering my lessons on cultural proficiency and positionality, 
I got to explore the dynamics of citizen leadership while supporting individuals with disabilities. Um, I also learned about educational psychology and other related fields that I never knew existed. You'd think I would have known what educational psychology was, that's why majors are education and psychology. <laughs> but I didn't know that was until this summer, and now I'm considering pursuing it after Brennan's. I also got to meet some of my personal inspirations who made me excited to come into work every single day. Um, my mom even commented on how ridiculous it was, how much fun I had working full time this summer. Um, thanks to this fellowship, I now have mentors who can personally relate to my passions and who unconditionally support my aspirations. So my original plan was to apply to graduate school this December, but Siegel has opened up a whole new world of possibilities to me and helped me realize that I don't know what I want to pursue yet. So pondering about my post undergrad plans as I graduate in a short three months, um, I know that I do want to continue this work as interning at the center has um, confirmed my commitment to stay in this field. And close off, because of my experience as a single fellow, I know that I do belong here working with students with disabilities, and I will never again question that. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Thank you.